All right, CNT 125 orientation lab. Third part of our lab, we're going to do some refresher on Packet Tracer. There is a few times this semester we'll be using Packet Tracer to either do a lab or practice for midterm or final. So it's going to be handy to, to make sure you have um, this installed and remember how to use uh, some of the little little tidbits in here. So for this one, on our week one, here's our week one uh, section of the of the content page in the do area. Here's our week one on campus orientation lab. Here is the packet tracer file. Uh, I will click on that and just like 120, hopefully you remember it'll come up. It doesn't recognize it. Just click download. So I'm going to download this file to my PC. I'm going to go to my downloads folder. Here is my downloads folder and there is that packet tracer file. What I want to do is I want to open packet tracer. So let me find, let me get my couple things out of the way here. Let's slide that over. All right, on our lab machines, we do have Packet Tracer already installed here for you, so we can launch that. You will need your login. You will need your login um, that you've used previously for Packet Tracer. So make sure you have that. Make sure you have that or make sure you have access to that. Um, if this is the first time you're using this packet tracer, make sure you do the whole keep me logged in nonsense here. Uh, use your login. Some of yours might actually be my account's older, so it's the uh, Networking Academy. Some of yours might be skills for all, so make sure you pick the one that you have your account set up for. Okay, Mine's a little older, so I have mine under Netacad. I will plug mine in here. And then I will plug my password in. That way I can use this program. Small price to pay for a free program. So I will log this in. I'm going to make this just a little smaller to work with. And now I'll open my packet tracer file. So I'll say open. I'll go to this downloads folder. And I'll do that. I'll open that. And just for my own safety, if you will, I usually turn right around to a save as. Um, and I do something like done or working or something like that, that I know this is the file that I'm working. In case it gets really goofed up, I can reload the other one that I've downloaded previously. Okay, so here is a network setup similar to the kind of stuff you saw in 120. We are going to do the copper links, and then we'll do the IP addressing and gather results is what we're going to do. So let me slide this over a little bit further. There we go. So on the, on the uh, uh, cabling, we're going to use the physical tab. We're going to go to, we're going to do the Harrisburg City first, Harrisburg office, and we're going to cable these workstations up to the existing wall outlet. So connections down here, connect your straight through cable. We're going to connect to the back of the PC into the NIC, and then we're going to connect it to the wall out of here. And I'm just doing all left clicks. I'm not doing anything fancy at this point. Jack one, NIC here, Jack two. Okay. It's showing these links are down right now. That's all right. We just connected the work area. I need to go to the closet and patch in the other end in the closet. So I'm going to click on the closet here. Again, all left clicks. I'm going to zoom in to make it a little easier to look at. And I'm going to connect from the patch panel to the switch. If you remember uh, doing that back in 120, I'll do my straight through again. And I'm going to go to the jack one and then into port one on the switch. Jack 2 here, and a port 2 on the switch. And this now should be looking like the lab equipment rack that you just got done using in the lab room. I'm going to navigate back out, and you'll see that I have some green link lights there. Woohoo! Okay. I'm going to navigate back out, and I'm going to go to the Philadelphia City, and I'm going to do something very similar. Over here, I'm going to grab my patch cable, PC into Jack 1. Over here, patch cable into jack two. Again, links are down. We'll go to the closet and let's patch these in. Here is jack one into port one, jack two into port two. I'll navigate back out and we'll hopefully see we're getting link lights. Yahoo! So we have everything physically. Where are you? Let's zoom out. There we go. There's our cities. We have everything physically connected. I did the Harrisburg side and I did the Philly side. Now we need to do some IP addressing. So on the Harrisburg side, we're going to do static IP. On the Philly side, we're going to do dynamic IP. So I'm going to go to logical now.
Uh, my links show up well here, which is good. If they don't, for some reason, just move the PC a little bit and the links will like snap back in place. Okay. Don't panic if they look like they're off in weird directions. All right. Hi, Irish Big PC. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go to the desktop. I'm going to go to IP config and I'm going to plug in a static IP here. Follow the scheme that's listed there. We are going to use, slide this over a little bit, 192, 168, 10, 10, 192. 68 10 10 watch out for typos it fills in a default subnet mask for class c which is perfect gateway 192 10.1 now remember gateway is the address in this case of the router i'm attached to which is exactly what's going on here okay it's literally the address of that port dns we're going to use 192 Ooh. Look at that typo there, 6830.2. That's the address of the DNS server over here at the other site. So I'm double checking all those for typos. Then I will close that out. And while I'm at it, I'm going to open the command prompt and do IP config. Let's make sure that looks correct. And it does. There's 1010. There's 101 Yahoo. Let's do the same thing on the laptop. Remember, we don't want to have any conflicts. So 192, 168. Um, this one needs to be uh, 10.11, so there's no conflicts. 192, 168, 10.1. 192, 168, 68, 30.2. There's my DNS. I will close that. I will go to my command prompt. I will do IP config and verify. Yes, looking good, looking good. So over here, before I leave here, I'm going to test connectivity to the web servers over here, 30.4. So I will do a ping. I will do a ping to 192, 30.4. The first one or two might time out. That's not a big deal. It has to find its path. It's literally going through a couple network devices, but I should see a couple successfuls. Um, I can always repeat that, and this time through I should see four successfuls because it's found its path by now. That's what I should see. Uh, and I'm going to repeat that for the laptop, make sure it is connected up correctly as well. Ping 192, 168, 30.4. There we go. We're good. Now on the Philly side, we're going to do dynamic addressing. So over here on the Philly desktop, IP config, let's toggle this and make sure it tries to pick up an IP. It's trying. It's not finding one, so it's done in a PIPA, 169.254. That is a number we should recognize. When we're trying to do dynamic addressing, and I can't find a DHCP server for various reasons, it self-assigns a 169.254. Well, us in networking, we pretty much never want to see this number, so this is a red flag of something is not right. Well, before I panic, let's try the laptop. Let's try this and see if it does the same thing. Okay. And it's trying, it's trying, it's trying. Oh, no. Can't find a DHCP server. Ah, what do we do? Well, we have everything cabled. We have green linky link, link lights. Hmm. What's actually going on in this case is the um, DHCP server over here. I'm going to go to the DHCP server. I'm going to go to services. This service is actually turned off. So we're going to turn that service on. And now, if I try it again, I should hopefully get, I'll cycle that, requesting an IP. It actually is getting a 3101. And let's try the laptop. And uh, I'll do static, dynamic. We'll see if it follows. There you go, 3102. So those are now filling in. So in this case, we knew it was not layer one. We knew it was not layer two. We're getting blinking link lights. We tried the dynamic, wasn't getting there. In this case, it was the server that was not handing them out. Um, and that's actually in the directions here to make sure that's turned on. So now let's do IP config on these guys. IP config. And if I do slash all this time, um, I actually have in here, it shows you the IP subnet mask gateway and also shows the address of the DHCP server. Uh, letting you know that it is actually getting it via DHCP. So there's that one. And we'll do the Philadelphia here as well. IP config slash all. And there's 102. Um, DHCP server, DNS, all that kind of good stuff. Yay.
So we now have, and actually I need to, um, I'll verify my connectivity here. Let's do a ping here. Ping 192, 192, 168, 30.4 to the web server. There you go. Looks good. All right. Now that we have things cabled correctly, now that we have IP settings static over here, dynamic over here, we should have full connectivity, which we do. So we're going to gather proof that things are up and functioning. So on the Harrisburg side, we're going to grab the IP config and we're going to do a trace route and put it into a text file. Okay. So I'm going to actually, here was my notepad previously. I'm going to save this and I'm going to do a file new. And this one I will call, let me save this guy so I don't forget, save as. We're going to do, I'll do this here, but I'm going to put packet tracer in the middle. 25 PT orientation. That way I know this is the packet tracer. Uh, so here, packet tracer, um, static, IP address, config. And I'm going to grab the IP config from the Harrisburg PC as well as a trace. So over here, Harrisburg PC, let's do a command prompt. I'm going to hit the enter key a whole bunch of times. That way I have a clean display here. Here's my IP config, and then I'm going to do a trace RT over to 192.168.30.4 to the web server, and that should show the three steps it's gone through to get there. I'm going to copy these results. I'm going to right-click and copy. That works the best here. Right-click, copy. I'm going to go to my notepad file, and I'll right-click, paste, and there is my results from Packet Tracer. There's my results from Packet Tracer. I'll save that. And there's my Harrisburg sign, the IP config, and trace. Um, so my static configuration on the Harrisburg side of Packet Tracer. I'm going to go to the Philly side now. So let's go over here to the Philly side. Philly PC. And I will do an IP config slash all. So I can see all the configuration. There it is there. That's the one piece I'm going to get. And then I'm going to do a ping to the web server, 192.168.30.4. There we go. And there's my successful to the web server. So we know that its configuration is correct. I'm going to highlight all of this. I'm going to right-click copy. I'm going to go to my notepad file. And in here I'll do packet tracer dynamic config. And I will paste this in. There's my IP config all 30.101 and then my, my, my ping that's here. And I will save that file. All right. Now I may want to, again, I'm going to, I'm saving my text file. I'm going to make sure I save that. I may want to save the packet tracer. That's why I did a save as at the beginning. That way I have that as a just in case. Um, I can close this packet tracer now. It's going to resave that for me. I'm going to go to my documents folder. I think it's where I have, no, actually it was in the downloads. Here's the packet tracer working file. It was in my downloads. And in the documents I should have, um, well, actually, no, I have the, the text files out here on the desktop. There's my two text files from the lab right there. All right, so what I'll do at this point, make sure I have everything, and I might want to save them to like a USB drive or a Google drive so you have those files as a just-in-case. What I want to do now is make sure I have all them, and this is why I have a reminder here of like, okay, the first text file should have these things in. The second text file should have these things in. You're going to go to the Dropbox on D2L and submit these, okay? So on D2L, I'll go out here to Dropbox. I will go to my lab orientation, Open that and submit those two text files just like you did with uh, stuff in 120. And once you add those two files, make sure you submit. All right. There is the last part, the packet tracer part of our orientation lab.